Hello everyone, this is Suren again and I welcome you all to my channel Adamant Algorithm. Today uh, we are going to see how to handle sprite sheets in Unity 2019. This technique should work uh, from Unity 2017 version and onwards. Uh, in the recent versions of Unity, uh, it has been made really, really uh, easy for us to handle a sprite sheet. Well, what is called a sprite sheet? Sprite sheet is nothing but a two-dimensional uh, image. Mostly, it has transparency enabled in it, uh, so it might be comes in. Uh, to, so it might comes in a format like Targa, TGA, or PNG format. Well, when you download sprite sheet from the internet you might get two types of sprite sheets one is like this um, let me just open it for you this is a single png image but as you can see this is a walk cycle of um, zombie i guess so as you can see this is frame number one frame number two frame number three frame number four this way or the creator might have done it this way okay normally it's actually done this way but it seems like it actually goes in reverse but I'm not sure okay so our what we're gonna do today is how to extract these uh, PNGs in this one sheet of image into four different sheets so that we can actually jump between each frames to create the animation that's exactly what we're gonna do today okay um, so let me go back to the unity in here when you select any art form in your um, project window of Unity, on the right hand side, you can see that we have a texture type. Uh, Unity's intelligence um, detected that this is actually a sprite. Well, that's great. Thank you, Unity. Um, and we are interested in this particular button today in this video. Okay, so but before we actually go ahead and click this button, let's take a look. Make sure that it's actually sprite, it is correct. Sprite mode is single. This is the most important option that you are that you need to concentrate. This is not a single image. Okay, Unity thinks this is a single image, but we know there are multiple images inside. So we're gonna change from single to multiple. Very important step. And leave the rest of the option as it is for now. And one more option I'm normally interested in is, sorry, this wrap mode. So what is called uh, this wrap mode? It's set to clamp by default. Let me explain you very quickly what are the different options available. Repeat, if you, you can choose repeat option if you are actually using this picture as a texture. For example, floor tiles, um, bricks, th those kind of things. Okay, so the single image will be repeated multiple times. Clamp is the default, default option and what clamp does is it stretches the edges of a single image until the object is covered. In other words, think about a photo frame. One single picture right inside the frame. Fits good, right? So that's what clamp. And that's the default option. Mirror is you take one picture, when you tile it, it mirrors the same image. Which means it swaps X and Y, sorry, it swaps positive X and minus X, okay, in the next picture and so on and so forth. Mirror one says when you tile the image, first copy of that, or in other words, the first repetition of a single picture will be mirror, mirrored and the next, next repetitions will be not mirrored. Um, and per axis is if you are interested in setting everything manually by u coordinates and v coordinates of every single picture tedious job i know you can go for per axis for as far as this project and this exercise is considered clamp would be the great great option and 95 percentage of most of the projects that you work clamp works just fine and one more most important information about this filter mode it's set to bilinear by default let me quickly tell you that the point which is no filter meaning when you go very near to this particular image it might look pixelated okay and that's what we call filter mode but as far as the 2d graphics is considered I would prefer no filter because it will not blur your 2d graphics very important point especially when you play your game in a 
a mobile phone in a big screen small screen this does matter okay so please go for no filter if it is a 2d game by linear actually blurs the image a little bit which means when you are very near to an image it will be blurred trilinear is almost the same like bilinear but the blur will be more but trilinear is very good for textures like semi-orthographical projections like floor uh, or a roof these kind of uh, pictures where the view is progressive okay but anyway let's go for no filter for now and click on apply so everything is cool at our end let's go ahead and click sprite editor and this is the infamous sprite editor in unity as you can see uh, it shows the image as big as possible according to the monitor size so it will be easy for us to work on okay so how to the process of extracting single pictures from this one single image is called slicing so there is an uh, option to slice all the way on the top it says slice okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here and we are presented with three options what are those three options are automatic is selected by default and the other one is grid by cell size meaning if you know the size or if you are the creator of a sprite sheets and you know what is exactly the cell size for example if i know that this cell is this much size for example 128 into 210 for example and if if i know the cell size of everything like again another 128 uh, into 210 and so on and so forth if i know this size i can go for this option slice go for this option enter the size that you know or if you have downloaded the website says what's the size of it you can use it or you can go by grid by cell count sometimes you can have a cell count like one ph is divided into like a chessboard imagine a chessboard okay it's divided into several cell sizes at the time you can use this option but my favorite way of doing and it's a easiest way of doing it is leaving everything to unity which is automatic okay so what automatic does is when you slice with automatic option, it will detect where the transparency is not there and cut that into a separate picture. Cool, right? Foolproof. Well, we know in this picture, these areas are transparent. So obviously the unity is going to beautifully cut here. That's what our guess is. Okay. And one more quick option you need to see is pivot. So the pivot is set to center. So the pivot applies after slicing, meaning I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to click to automatic now and I'm going to click slice. Okay. So you might thinking, whoa, whoa. Okay. Did we, did it slice it? What happened? Well, what just happened is there was, it has been sliced, but it's really, really hard for you to see the slices. So if you keep pressing the button control in your keyboard, you can see there is a green border that appears around your cuts can you see it okay so that's are the sliced versions okay which means the green borders represents the sliced images well i'm pretty happy about the slices i don't have any complaints well done unity well done okay now slice center if it is center the pivot point for example the pivot point of each slice would be right somewhere in the center right at the center of each slice okay but if i would have chosen if i had this option on for example top left and i clicked slice you can't see it here but i want to open up the reunit uh, unity again you can see your slices will be having your pivot point right here so it totally depends upon the artist Okay, where you want the pivot point to be. For example, if you want to rotate the object this way, uh, having this as a reference point, then maybe this will work. Okay, for me, most of the time, center is what I want. So I'm going to click center. And can you, this beautiful option right here called delete existing is you can slice any number of times without worrying because when you slice it again, the previous sliced images are deleted by default. So that's beautiful option, delete uh, existing. Now, automatic center 
and that's exactly what I want. Before I close this window, I press Control, check everything is cool, then do not forget to apply this button called Apply. Okay, apply it, done, close. When you come back here now, as you can see, oh la la, this is what we're gonna know. See now the Unity have individually extracted the pictures exactly what we want. Now you can drag this picture as an individual picture and you can edit it, okay? And do anything you want to do with this, okay? This is one type of sprite sheet. Okay, which is a very famous way and this is exactly what we call the sprite sheet is more than one number of picture inside sometimes if you download 2d artwork it will be presented to you this way for example can you see the actions are already cut for you okay uh, like this so there are 10 frames starting from walk one and all the way up to walk 10. So this is actually the walk cycle and this is a jump cycle, this is a run cycle. Okay, I got downloaded this from gamert2d.com. Okay, thanks to them. Well, so how to use this and how to animate it? And this is already cut, okay? So a lot of work has been reduced for us. Now let's go ahead and see how to animate these um, Okay, individual sprites into a meaningful animation. Okay, for that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the walk just one picture here. Okay, and rename it whatever you want. Dino walk. Okay, now just have one picture here that you can see. One sprite is selected. So how to actually make this into an animation? It's pretty simple. For that you need uh, animation window in Unity. Uh, it's right here. Well, basically I'm gonna just close this tab to show you how to go back and get it. Window animation, either you can go this way or you just simply press Control and number six. There we go. I'm gonna drag it and drop it here. Now, so how to use it is pretty simple. Go to Dino Walk, select the object. As you can see now, it says create an animation in the animation window. Select create and it will ask you where to save your animation. It's always a good habit to go to the asset folder, create a new folder and you call it anim and you give a name Dino Walk Anim. All right, so there we go. So now the Dino Walk Anim is ready for us. So let's see how to use it. Well, basically, select all the frames that talks about the walk. Okay, then drag and drop simply over here. Um, as you can see now, it's pretty tough to see what is happening here, but there is one little icon at the end. So click this icon and that will show you the images, but still, oops, it's kind of jagged. But there's a beautiful option in Unity newest versions is if you have deselected this don't worry about it drag and draw I'm sorry drag around it and select all the keyframes and you could see there are two handles on the left and right hand side what these represents are if you pull this this way all the selected images will be equally distributed in the distance that you are dragging for example in this by default, Unity will show you one second of animation. From zero to zero, zero, this is a first second of the animation. If I want to expand all the frames up to this first second, all I have to do is just drag this little blue handle and see how neatly it distributes with equal gaps. Okay, manually it's kind of boring to do this, but now Unity have made it really nice. Okay, so this button right here helps us to see a preview in our, uh, without running the game, that's very important. So you click this, as you can see, ooh la la, the dino has started walking. Okay, this is exactly why. Congratulations, you have created your first animation in 2D in Unity. Now. What we can do more about this is, my animation is done now. So I'm gonna to go to the click view, 
I'm sorry, select the dyno. Okay, maybe it's, I'll move this guy a little bit here and I'll start playing the game. I click on play button. The dyno works, no problem, but it's kind of weird because the dyno is working on the same location. Well, basically, it's almost, this is the end of the tutorial of this particular video. But if you are wondering about what you could do possibly with this, well, I would say I can quickly go ahead and add a script so that will make more a lot of um, sense. Uh, Dino walk script, new script. Let's go ahead and open it. Wait for a while. Yep, now it is done. I'll go to the project, Dino walk script. I'll double click it. I just add a simple transformation, I mean translation code, transform.translate. So I want to walk this guy from left to right. So I'm going to say vector.right uh, times what's the speed I'm going to give to. And I want to go with time.delta times to make it the same speed of animation in all the computers you're going to play. I come back here, wait for it to compile. Yep, it's done. So let's go ahead and play it. That's it. So you have done your animation successfully. You can do whatever you want to do possibly to this dyno now. You go ahead, add the collider. Okay, then you do, for example, just do whatever you want to do. You have idle animation and all those other things. Well, if you want to know how to change from one state of animation to the other state, for example, how to make this dyno to jump when it is walking from suddenly changes from one state to other state of animation from run to jump uh, from while jumping, it's dying. Okay, from walking to die from walking to run, from running to walk, whatsoever combination, okay? It's called the state machines of animation. And I'm, go I'm covering it in my separate video. For now, I just wanted to show you guys how to use Sprite Editor in Unity as simple as possible, okay? One more thing I wanna show you is, um, if you go ahead to the assets, and you can see in the animation folder, this is an animation file we have saved. And if you see here, we have an option called a loop time. Loop time means these frames, for example, all these frames right here will be looped. Okay. If you switch this off, the play, it will start playing from here and it will end at the end. We don't want that. Okay. Most of the times by default, loop time is on. Loop poses. It will copy the last pose or first pose again to actually make the animation run or look smoothly. Cycle offset is if you change this number, when the loop starts, normally it starts from 0 to 1, for example, then the loop back to 0 and 1. For some reason, if you want the loop to start from 0.2 second, you can do that using cycle offset. Okay, most of the times, I won't recommend you to use loop pose. Loop pose is okay, it's not dangerous, but cycle offset is kind of dangerous if you are not sure what you are doing. So I wouldn't suggest to use cycle offset um, yet. Okay, so this is fine. So just quick demonstration without loop time. <clears throat> now you can see, oops, you know, oh, that's funny, all right. <laughs> From walking to skating, all right. So, you know the importance of loop time now, so let's keep it clicked and everything is okay now. All right, so that's it. So if you achieved it, congratulations, give a tap at your back. You know, you have done really well. And um, if you have reached until this, uh, in this video, I think you have followed it properly and also you are happy with what I'm delivering. Um, so thank you so much for sticking with this video and please do. Uh, subscribe if you like the content of this channel uh, that would encourage me to give you more information about unity and i will be at least releasing three videos per week so please do subscribe and also um, comment if you have any doubts i'm active in twitter so if you have any doubts please catch me in the twitter and i will clear your doubt as soon as possible 
okay and thank you so much guys thank you so much for being here and i'll see you in the next video take care bye bye